Now, from Fairway Sports World in Natick, our champions, Sue Dugan from Dedham and Debbie Pigeon from Hyde Park, take on the challenge of Lisa Orlandi from Westfield and Michelle Borowick of Chicopee, Mass, here on Candlepin Double. in on a little secret. Good afternoon, I'm Ed Harding. Michelle's last name is spelled B-O-R-O-W-I-E-C, and I've been practicing it to make sure I get it right. She gave me the thumbs up. My one hit, I made it, makes me one for one. Welcome to Candlepin Doubles. I thank you so much for spending part of your afternoon with us. The prize breakdown, in case you've forgotten, $500 for the winners, $300 for the runners-up. If a team can total over $250, they will take a couple hundred bucks. If you can mark three in a row, you'll take $50. Three strikes in a row, you'll take $1,000. That's the prize breakdown. That's the cold, hard cashbacks. But the ladies of the bowlers, they are the stars, and they're up right now. Sue and Lisa, please. You are looking at Sue Dugan. One half of the championship team from a week ago clears out eight with her first ball. She watched Lisa Orlandi from Westfield also matching Sue Dugan trying to start out with a mark in the frame but she can't do it Lisa Orlandi is single she has a 10 month old sister Ashley she goes to Westfield State and she's taking a shot at a mark there goes Sue Sue and her partner Debbie making their second appearance today They both have bowled one frame here in the first string. Sue Dugan from Dedham. She has a couple of children. Got a chance to meet them last week. Tax consultant with an average of 109. So far, an average of eight on her first balls here in each frame. Lisa Orlandi will get the 10 to fall. rolls and picks it up to post the first mark of this match. And Lisa Orlandi. No, just missed it on the comeback. So she's trying to finish out with a 10, and she does not post her second straight nine. And Sue Dugan is rolling on her mark. That's a pretty sweet ball. Gets six on it. And through two frames, you can see the lead for the champions. And Sue Dugan clears it out, but leaves one left. And Lisa Orlandi. Sue Dugan missed it. The minute she rolled it, she knew that she missed it. Lisa, talk about pressure. She's not only bowling on the show today, but her dad, Jim Orlandi, is with her. Well-known bowler. I know bowlers will be familiar with that name. The champions have a 10-pin lead so far as we've rolled three frames here in the first string. Sue Dugan in the beige shirt with the Empire Lane scrolled on the back as she drives through and gets eight to fall flirting with the ninth, but it stands. And Lisa Orlandi with a high single of 161, a high triple of 418, and an average of 108. You watch the concentration of Sue Dugan and her delivery to pick them both up and gets them for her second mark so far. Not second in a row, but second mark. As Lisa Orlandi still has three pins standing. And she'll work on cleaning them out. And she gets them. A 
Sue Dugan, the left-hander, working on a mark. Looks sweet. She gets six on the mark. And she's extended her team's lead to 16 pins. Lisa Orlandi. She could look at posting a mark. Tough pickup here. Good effort. Gets one of them. Lisa Orlandi would love nothing more for her team than to go out by posting a mark, collecting the final two pins. This is her second ball in the fifth frame. Good direction. That's the way to do it. Good and soft, nothing overpowering, just perfect enough. And Sue Dugan leaves two pins here, so the challengers are working on a mark. The champions have a 16-pin lead. We'll be back for the next five, so please stay with us. The other half of the championship team. You met her daughter Stacy last week. Her first ball. <laughs> They're all shaking. <laughs> Will they all go? No. A lot of activity on that ball. And you're looking at Michelle Baroic from Chicopee, Mass. She has a 13-year-old son, Sean. How in heaven's name, a young woman like that can have a 13-year-old son is just beyond me, but she does. Debbie Pigeon. Tried to pick them both up, couldn't. The challengers have cut neatly into the champion's lead. It's down to six pins. Of course, Michelle was rolling on the mark that was set up previously by Lisa. The champions leave themselves with a nine, and Michelle picks up a nine as well. I do want to remind you that tonight, the True Value Candlepin Championship will be rolled at Pilgrim Lanes and Haverhill live at 6.30. I have the pleasure of being with Don Gillis, and we'd love to have you with us. I'm looking forward to it. My first chance to work with Don, and that'll be a terrific thrill for me. Debbie Pigeon gets a... Oh, come on, that other one's got to go, huh? No, it doesn't. As Michelle rolls, powers out a couple. But Debbie is looking squarely at an opportunity to put a mark up for her team. The team of Pigeon and Dugan. A five-pin lead through six boxes. But Debbie Pigeon has a chance to extend it. She didn't get it. There's Michelle. And she still leaves herself with four. Debbie clears out the final pin. You see what Michelle sees, and she's made her call. She rolls and gets one of them. She's posted a seven in the seventh. It's an eight-pin lead for the champions. Pigeon and Dugan is Debbie Pigeon. And now, Michelle Baroic. Debbie's high single is 161. Her high triple is 418. Her average is 108. And her mark is in the eighth box. This is Michelle. The minute she threw it, goes to the right. She knew it didn't feel well. Her best effort now would be to clean them all out and put a 10 up in the frame. She doesn't get any of them, so she'll put a 6 up in the frame, and this could hurt because the champions are working on a mark. It's going to the left. Two pins on the mark. The lead is now 14 pins for the champions of Pigeon and Dugan. As Michelle rolls, strong ball, leaves two. It's Debbie Pigeon. She's got it. She likes it. Neatly gets them to fall. So there's a mark in the ninth frame for Michelle. Debbie plays the straight route, collects two pins, putting an eight up. You see the lead, but of course the challengers are working on a mark as Debbie Pigeon rolls her first ball in the 10th frame. Looks pretty solid. 
Looked solid the minute she let it go. Well, there's a emphatic way to end it. Huh? Get it the tenth one. Go on. There's a response. Nine pin. It won't go. It won't go. She's shaking the floor, blowing down the court. It just won't work. Nine pins on the spare, so it's now down to a three-pin lead for the champions through nine. But of course, Debbie Pigeon threw a strike in the tenth. This is Michelle. She's got it. She posts a mark in the tent. Ladies just keep on bowling. Here's Debbie going to the right. Picked up three pins on her first ball. Here's her second ball. She, of course, yielding to Michelle. There's Michelle's working on the marks, going to the right nonetheless. She powers out six on the mark. This is Debbie. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. She picks up six on the strike, and it's a very close match. We've rolled a string. The champions have a three-pin lead of the challengers. We will take a break. We'll change lanes. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Already rolled a string. We are beginning the second. That's Lisa Orlandi, half of the challenger team. They're all shaken. But those two nasty ones just won't fall. As you watch Sue Dugan roll her first ball. In the second string. And there's one left. One left. Just a reminder. We won't be with you for a while now. Beginning next week, college football is back here on Channel 5 and ABC. But we will be back right after Thanksgiving. Take you through the cold New England winter. Nice pickup by Lisa Orlandi. Sue Dugan is looking at a mark as well. They both start off in bang, bang fashion. Sweet down the middle, softly rolled. Seven on the mark. Sue Dugan takes out nine. Now how's that for a championship response? Said a good idea, but still leaves herself with two. It's a five pin lead for the champions. Boy, hit everything except the sucker that was standing there. As Lisa picks up the 10 pin, puts a nine up. And Sue misses it. She puts a nine up as well. Still a five pin lead for the champions. As Lisa Orlandi looks, her first ball in the third frame looks good, rolls down, and it is pretty good. Still leaves her with that for a mark. There's Sue Dugan, the left-hander, she delivers. Lisa's shirt and her partner's shirt say Downtown Lanes from Springfield. Tough roll. A lot of activity. Sue gives it a good ride, but still leaves herself with one pin. Lisa Orlandi picks up both of them. A 10 in the frame, and a 10 in the frame as well for Sue Dugan. So we still stand a five-pin lead for the champions. The match is very close. We're in the second string. Lisa and her partner, Michelle, are making their first appearance in the double show. Lisa has notched a couple of victories and appearances on Candleton Bowling. She was the senior girls' all events NBA state champion in her next to final year of youth competition. So she's got a great history of it. The 10 pin is standing there for her. And she doesn't get it. As Sue rolls and misses. A four-pin lead now for the champions as we have rolled the first four boxes of the second string. Six boxes left. Plenty of time. Looks good. And it is very good. No. 
A mark would be exactly what this team could use, or a Landy and Baroic. Not that they're that far out. But the mark would just set the tone for the second half of the second string, putting the pressure squarely on the champions. She's got it. She goes out of the mark. And Sue Dugan leaves herself with three pins to try to go out with ten in the frame. It is through the first four boxes of a second string. Very close, extremely close. A four pin lead for the champions, but the challengers are working on a mark. This is Sue Dugan. Goes for the action, can't quite get it, puts an eight up. We will change bowlers and you will see Debbie Pigeon and Michelle Baroic roll out the final bit of the second string. And as those ladies warm up, just another reminder again, 6.30 tonight live right here on Channel 5. Don Gillis and I will present the True Value Candlepin Championship at Pilgrim Lanes in Haverhill. Love to have you with us. As Michelle rolls, first ball on the mark. A little bit to the right. She's got four pins on the mark. Debbie Pigeon, powerful bowler. Gets six on her first ball. Michelle concentrating, trying to mount, trying to mount some kind of a comeback. Right now, the challengers have a two-pin lead. The challengers lead it by two. Debbie Pigeon concentrating on the four pins she has on the end of the alley. Holds herself off from falling and does a terrific job of collecting the pins so she is marked. It's Michelle. Posts an eight in the box. It's a dead even score. With the champions working on a mark, there's Michelle. Can't get it. Now this is the ball from Debbie Pigeon. Eight pins on the mark. It's an eight pin lead for the champions. As Michelle, good effort, good effort. Still leaves herself with one lonely pin. Second straight mark for Debbie Pigeon. Michelle rolls out her frame, cannot pick it up. Remember, three marks in a row. It's 50 bucks and bonus money that she could work on. But more importantly, she's working for her team, and her team has a very delicate eight-pin lead. Still enough bowling to go. There's Debbie Pigeon. Oh, I'll tell you, if she's going to get the bonus, she's going to work for it. But she can work for it. She gets seven on the spare. As they have extended their lead. Good effort by Michelle. Still leaves a pin. It's a 16-pin lead for the champions. And if she's going to have a little bonus money in her pocket, in her teammate's pocket, she has to knock all those three down there. Anything is possible in this world, huh? Except that. <laughs> Here goes Michelle. Solid nine. And it's a 16 pin lead. We have two frames left. It's time to mark, it's time to drop, it's time to lay him down fast. There goes Michelle. A solid hit, but just a little bit to the left at the end. In the ninth frame. Michelle knows realistically a mark here is necessary. Good effort. That's the way to do it. She responds with a mark. Debbie Pigeon responds with a mark. It's one of those take that. No, you take that. It's Michelle's ball on her mark. Goes a little bit to the left. Picked up three pins on it. There's Debbie's ball on her mark. She picked up six on it. Two. 
to a bunch of quick addition here, but it appears the champions have successfully defended their championship. As Debbie Pigeon tries to clean them all out. Really didn't have to. Didn't. There's Michelle collecting a pin. There are three lonely pins sitting there. She turns to her teammate and says, that's it. It was a good effort, though. That was it, but nonetheless, a gallant bit as you watched. Debbie Pigeon roll her final ball. Champions have done it. Strong second half from Debbie Pigeon here in the second string. The challengers are Landy and Berhoek at 216, but not enough for the champions of Pigeon and Dugan. A 237. Even I can add up. That's a 21 pin lead and a victory. We'll be back to talk with both right after this. Were you a little more relaxed the second time around? Very much more. Very much more. That, that's half of the championship team. Let's talk of, to the runners off the semi-championship team or whatever. See, the, the pressure's on Lisa. Lisa doesn't want to talk. So, Lisa, what happened? What was the key to the match? It was Michelle's fault. Oh. She's right. She's right. She's right. Oh, you can't pass the puck I like that. I her all the way here, and I told her she was supposed to carry me today, and she did. I just fell through. You know, and you, you succumbed to a couple of very strong bowlers, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah sure definitely. Did. Well, it's $300, and we want to thank you for being on the show. And thank you. Keep rolling well in downtown lanes and have a terrific fall. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the champions, you know, if we, bring, if we bring your family back, Debbie, but if you keep on winning, it might be kids will be running around the whole alley, right? Maybe I'll have another one by then. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about the second string. What happened with that? You were so strong in the end. I don't know. Maybe I just relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, Sue. Thank you. Please stay with us, if you will. Okay. Okay, terrific. This is the score. We'll be off until after the Thanksgiving holidays, and then we'll be back. We hope to see you then. For Candlepin Doubles, I'm Ed Harding. Thank you so much for joining us.